We're now going to continue on the topic of HMMs. We just looked at the Viterbi example. Now let's see what else we can do in HMMs. So given multiple hidden Markov models, we may want to compute which HMM was most likely to have generated a particular observation. And why do you, do you think this is useful? Well, it turns out that you can have different HMMs from different languages, and then you can decide whether the document or the sentence is in a particular language based on the likelihood that the sentence was generated from each of those particular HMMs. So the naive solution is to try all the possible sequences uh, for each of the HMMs. And again, this is something that is not going to work in practice because it uh, uh, has a very high complexity. Instead, what we want to do is something similar to the Viterbi algorithm in the sense that it uses a dynamic programming. It's something called the forward algorithm. So the forward algorithm, again, uses a trellis called the forward trellis that encodes all the possible state paths. And I'm not going to go into the math for this uh, algorithm, but I just want to tell you that it's, again, based on the Markov assumption that the probability of being in any state at a given time only depends on the probabilities of being in any particular state in the previous time point. Okay, so there are three different types of learning algorithms for HMMs. The first one is called supervised learning, and that's when we have the luxury of having all of our training sequences be labeled with parts of speech. The second class belongs to the so-called unsupervised learning category, in which case we only have training sequences, like sequences of words or sentences, but we don't have any sequences of labels or parts of speech. In this case, the only thing that we need to know is uh, how many states we expect to have in the HMM. So as we know, the number of states in an HMM for part of speech tagging corresponds to the number of parts of speech plus possibly start and end. So this is something that we can easily get. And the third category of methods for HMM learning is called semi-supervised learning. In semi-supervised learning, we have some labeled training data, but most of the data is not labeled. We have, for example, a few hundred sentences that have been manually labeled for parts of speech, and then we have millions of tens of millions of sentences that have not been labeled. Let's first look at supervised HMM learning. We want to estimate uh, the transition probabilities and the emission probabilities using maximum likelihood estimates. So very simple method for this is to use uh, maximum likelihood. So we count how many times the certain uh, set of states, uh, of two states appears, and we just divide this by uh, the total number of instances of the first state. And we can do the same thing for observation probabilities, again, by counting the number of times that a certain word and a certain part of speech appear together, and then divide, divide this by the number of times that particular part of speech appears. And then we can use smoothing for any unseen uh, conditional probabilities. Now, a more interesting method is called unsupervised HMM training. In this case, we're given a set of observation sequences, and the goal is to build HMM, in particular to build the uh, mu model that consists of the A, B, and pi matrices. The most general technique used for uh, HMM training uh, without supervision is called the EM algorithm. EM stands for expectation maximization. And the specific implementation of EM for HMM training is called the baum welch algorithm or forward-backward algorithm. So baum welch is not guaranteed to find an exact solution for the best model that maximizes the probability of the observation given the model. However, it often reaches a solution that is acceptable. I'm only going to go through an outline of baum Uh Here's how it works. We initially set all the parameters of the HMM to random values. So in our case, uh, we had, uh, I believe, 12 different parameters. And then we're going to perform uh, a set of steps until uh, the set of parameters converges. The two steps are the E step and the M step. The E step is the expectation step that is used to determine the probability of the various state sequences for generating the observations. And then the M step, or the maximization step, is used to re-estimate the parameters based on the probabilities that we just observed in the E step. So very often what happens is that in a small number of iterations, probably a few dozen or even less, uh, the set of parameters converges and we can stop. So one, a few notes about uh, the EM algorithm is that the algorithm guarantees that at every iteration, the likelihood of the data increases. And it's also important because it can be stopped at any point in time and give us some reasonably acceptable partial solution. So 
So we don't need to wait until it converges. And it's also guaranteed to converge to a local maximum if we let it finish. So this is a little bit of an outline of the methods that I used uh, with HMS for natural language processing. And in the next lecture, we're going to look at some additional ways uh, to do part of speech tagging.